many years I was just able to sit back at the back of the class and just be quiet and be able to get, you know, A's and B's. I went to a school where all I had to do was to show up to class. Even if I didn't show up to class, teachers knew I was a good student, so they would just automatically give me an A. And then I came here and I was like, oh, I actually have to work, huh? You just know that you're ready for college and you're ready for experiencing the outside world. The colleges I'm thinking about are University of Pennsylvania, University of Pittsburgh at Johnston, Edinburgh. I thought about going to Washington State University and Rhode Island State University. My first choice will be Harvard Medical School. Research that's been done at the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland shows there are two primary drivers to income growth. Those two drivers are the skilled level of the workforce and innovation. 75 years ago, this region was in the top tier in both of those measures. Today, we've fallen behind. We look at the current uh, economic landscape, countries that are investing in education, making real reforms, are also uh, outcompeting us in a global economy. Clearly today, seven out of 10 jobs in the country require a college degree, and yet only three of 10 high school students in Ohio who start high school actually get a post-secondary degree within 10 years. Most of the new jobs and the great jobs in this economy are going to be for college graduates and frankly for people who have even more than college. There was a time when high school was enough. Not anymore. In fact, there will come a time that high school and a diploma won't guarantee you any type of job. The essence of uh, the possibilities for this country are really going to be focused on its ability to be able to outthink as well as outperform. And so the thinking side of it, the idea side of it, is now what universities are about. We have moved to the center of the economic realities in this country. But you come to college, uh, or at least the college like Hiram, and you are going to be thrown in with people who are very wealthy and very poor, and everybody in between. I'd say that there are barriers on the academic side, and there are barriers on the economic side, and there are barriers on the socialization side. There's barriers on all three. The largest barrier is self-efficacy. People believing that they have the option to go and that they can succeed. That's number one. Many friends or, or family members of mine never had the opportunity to attend college. So me having an opportunity was just great. So I had to, you know, take, take the opportunity and, and go to college. Well, we actually commissioned a survey last year among 18 to 25 year olds in Northeast Ohio. And the greatest uh, barriers uh, were balancing the financial and time commitments of work, and school. I was working Monday through Friday from 4 to maybe like 10 o'clock so the time that I had to do homework and stuff like that were minimal or even to study for tests so I had to I did a lot of cramming and stuff like that. Case is um, a very how should I put this uh, it's on a different level um, you're basically going to a school where you're going to be competing with people who went to um, private schools. They've been preparing for college for years because that's, that's something that their high school has, um, whereas mine did not. My mom, she wanted me to go to school. She wanted me, the first, she wanted me to be the first person to graduate with a college degree. Um, none of my other siblings were, they were unsuccessful at that. I really didn't have anybody that I could look up to that I can just call and say on a daily basis, you know, hey, I'm struggling with my homework. Hey, how do I go by this? So I pretty much did it on my own. No one on their own will figure out how you navigate this whole huge higher ed system without real support and in some instances, um, hand holding. So I think that's in some ways one of the biggest barriers that we sort of put the vision out, but we don't put the yellow brick road to sort of get there. We've seen a community that has attempted to do what's right by our young people with the best of intentions. However, it is going to take a more focused and sustained effort. And we have to have systemic change, not just a tweaking here and there or 
or accepting the rules as they are and saying we'll just um, do the best we can under these rules. No, we need to get rid of the rules if they're an impediment. The Higher Education Compact uh, is long overdue, and I applaud Mayor Jackson for pulling people together. What it is is really a commitment of key institutions in this community to focus on three issues. First, to raise high school graduation rates and make sure that kids that are graduating from high school are ready for college. Second is to ensure that students making choices about going to college have the knowledge and the resources to make the right choice. And third, to ensure that once students get to college that they persist through college. So one of the things that the Compact has established is a dashboard of metrics. We will be looking at those students who graduate from high school ready and prepared to attend college without remediation. Thereafter, we'll be looking at those students who matriculate to college completion within six-year period. It's when you begin to say, how are we doing? How do we measure? How do we track and is there a way we can begin to share data and see this as part of a collective effort? That's, I think, the, the magic of the Higher Education Compact. A part of our uh, commitment as a district is transparency in data and so uh, we have designed the data report cards for the Compact to align to the data report cards that we're creating for the district as well so that we can see as early as kindergarten readiness through third grade reading, eighth grade math, into high school, uh, you know, how kids are moving through the readiness indicators and then also collecting and working with data on the access issues as well. Institutions school districts, colleges, even organizations like Esperanza will be held accountable for the work that we do. Joining hands with the Cleveland Municipal School District and other organizations who have a common goal, a goal of graduation. And I think the balance between competition and cooperation among universities, among private sector corporations and uh, institutions of higher learning needs to be improved. It needs to be more cooperative. It's always about partnerships, you know. if. If the university uh, can't partner with other institutions, community colleges and other universities, and with our public schools, then we've lost the reason why we exist, and that is to uh, help people to attain their goals. And so this partnership is very important. And this is really the first time that the county has decided to, to really involve itself in education issues um, as part of our core mission that was never really part of what county government used to do. And we've accepted that um, because, again, we don't think it makes sense to have an economic strategy without an education strategy. So it's the coordination and the collaboration and putting it into some uh, structure and institutionalizing that structure that really will give us uh, the, the big leap. This has been the most um, collaborative, uh, forward-thinking effort that I've seen and the people that have been in the room ha are all in. Uh, I'm a CMSD grad, so I really want to see this work more than anything. Um, I stay up at night trying to figure this very thing out. How do we get kids plugged into these opportunities? We cannot stand by and just sort of watch uh, some, some kids go this way and a whole bunch go that way. It's a promise that we need to make to the, to the youth of Cleveland. And those who want to argue about the complication uh, I just ask them to pretend it's their child that they're talking about and it isn't really not that complicated then. There's lots of places where people talk about what needs to be done, but here's a, a group and a city where people have come together to actually make it happen. And just, I don't know, reach for the stars because you just never know.